Praise God, praise God. Um, I'm just giving a brief word today. Um, it's a word of thanks, it's a word of praise. It's a word that I struggle with and I kind of put it out on Facebook earlier today, but just want to give a brief explanation and go into a little bit of detail to help those that may or may not quite understand. Um, the word for the for this season is to discern your progress or your process. And being able to discern this process or this progress because in either form it's movement. God says that we must be at peace. And in this season many times there are some things that are sent, intended to test our peace, which is the true confidence that we carry in the word, the promises, and the will of God. In the midst of these disturbing acts, we must first try and recognize, is this a means of perfecting us in a process? Is this a means of the enemy attempting to distract us in the ministry or service that God would have us to perform? Or is this a distraction that's intended to point out your immaturity? In either case, one and three are actually one and the same, but the peace and the confidence that we then have in God to not be shaken, not to be rattled, not to have a bunch of noise behind us, just unnecessary noises and distractions that would keep us from being able to hear the voice of God. If you notice, I'm making a little bit of noise in the background, and in that noise that I'm making, it becomes a distraction to hear me. It becomes a distraction and a distortion in our mind. That's why I said, this is a message that said, discern the process or the progress. Because in the midst of getting this word, all hell broke loose. There were tests upon my character, tests upon my name, tests upon my reputation, and all things said, do I believe do I have confidence in God to show and prove, to show and tell? To handle the business at hand and continue doing the work. For a hot second, I wanted to tuck my tail behind myself and run. Not because I didn't believe God could do it. It was because I had tried too hard to do it. I was in the midst of what we would call discerning the perfecting process of God. The message to me had been, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Well now, time to apply. Here comes the noise. What's say God? Oh no, here comes more noise, more noise, more noise. More noise! More noise! I couldn't hear God. But even when I couldn't hear God, I had his word to fall back on. I had his word to tell me exactly what was supposed to take place. I had a promise to lay my head upon. I had confidence to know that there's nothing impossible for God. But in the midst of the noise, in the midst of the rattlings, do we discern whether or not God is perfecting us to step up in service, to step up in his word, to step up in our belief, to step up in our faith, to grow up as his children? Or do we allow the noise to give us headaches and to literally make us do this? I don't want to hear you, God. No, I don't want it anymore. 
because it's it's something that's serious. It's something that happens. It's something that I almost did. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus told Peter to watch and pray. And Jesus went off to pray to do his business. Well, Peter got off into his feelings. His surroundings kind of took over where he was at. And he went to sleep. And Jesus comes back and he says, Hey, Pete, I thought I told you to watch and pray. Ain't asked you to do nothing else. You ain't out to sing and dance. You ain't got to build nothing. Watch and pray. I'm going to go back and do my thing. Surroundings still got him. And it's not the noise. But in this moment, Peter was supposed to be discerning the perfecting progress or the perfecting process that God was taking him through. Because in this process, obedience was required. It wasn't that there was too much noise to hear, but there was a lot going on emotionally with Peter. He had just been rebuked by Jesus. They just had the Last Supper. Jesus is literally not himself according to what Peter's seen. But in the midst of the instruction, watch and pray. This was a discerning moment in which Peter got the word from the Lord. And all he had to do was pray. Obedience. I give this to you because in this discerning moment, if you are discerning, you're watching. But you're praying for the instruction of what it is that you see. So you don't become shaken, confused, thrown off, sit down the wrong path. Because you now have a discerning interest in God and the will of God by his word and by prayer. Of what the process or what your progress really is. So now when they talk about you and they want to smear your name, you can say, they did that to Jesus. God, in your word, you said that you would justify me. And because, Lord, you are the name above all names, my name falls beyond yours or below yours. So stand up in me and shut them up. I just prayed. I spoke the word. I discerned the fact that the Lord wanted me to stand on his word in the midst of that. Well, they trying to get on your nerves. They picking, they pulling, they sticking pins in your back. Oh, they jabbing you, they jabbing you, they jabbing you. Hmm. Many will say that's demonic. But the Lord said, I allowed that. So that you could become more humble. I didn't utter a mumbling word. So that you could be perfected and be more like me. Ouch. So quick to become the victim, but the Lord said, You're the victor when you look like me. When you look like the cross. When your focus is the cross, you're the victor. But I didn't see the cross. I didn't discern no cross in that. Man, that joker was getting on my nerves. I didn't say a mumbling word. I didn't have to defend myself. For God is my protector. He's my provider. He's my banner. He's my friend. He's my counselor. Wait a minute. These are the names and the functions of God because I know who he is. But did you discern the process that said, I really want to find out if you know. You said it, now show me. Well, God didn't tempt you. 
God, he allowed the test. He allowed Job to go through all kinds of hell. Take a look at the situation and discern your progress. Hey, I passed that test. And now your process. That's it. I'm going to go further. I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to look more like Christ. I'm going to proceed up Calvary. And I'm going to get closer to you, Jesus. It's a humble pie test. I got to eat some. So be it. But if it gives me the opportunity to be closer to you, oh Lord, I discern that that's what I have to do. Do not think more highly of yourself than others. Hmm. Be ye not deceived or in conceit of yourselves. The word of God. I should be able to say something because I don't deserve it. Hmm, you probably didn't. But who's to say that your suffering didn't deliver somebody else? It didn't persuade somebody else. It didn't bring somebody else into the kingdom. Lo and behold, you speak up for yourself. Lo and behold, the Lord has set up a situation where your actions dictate service. Where your actions have now become a testimony for others to want to know a little bit more about him. But you blew it because you knew that you didn't deserve it. So you spoke out of turn. So you spoke out of pocket. So you spoke out of character. So you acted a little bit ignorant. If you remember, old Peter, old Peter, in the midst of a change, he, he's the rock upon which Christ said he would build the church. He was that same guy that when he cast his shadow, he healed people going down the street. But when he didn't watch and pray, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he surely cut off the centurion's ear. Even though Jesus told him exactly what was going to happen. The word came to him and he still didn't want it because he would not watch and pray. In the moment of in the moment of climax, in the moment where all the rattlings and the shaking and all the noise and the confusion came, Peter was not at peace. And because he was not at peace, he could not discern the next move. He could not discern the voice of God. He could not discern the actions of Christ. So he acted out of character. The Lord is calling upon us in this moment, in this season, for self-discipline. To be able to discern his voice, to discern his process. So that when the rumblings and the shatterings come, we are not out of character. We are not out of place. We don't harm somebody that should be getting delivered. in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another divine word. A hard word, but a divine word. We thank you for the instruction. We thank you for the warnings. We thank you for giving us time and season. Father, if there's anything in us that should not be, we ask for your forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. If there's anything that's holding us back or hindering us from being able to discern your voice, your word, or even to be able to enter into prayer wholeheartedly. Father, we ask that you remove that thing right now in the name of Jesus. We pray right now that you cleanse us, that you cleanse our minds and our hearts and our hands so that we may be able to approach the throne of God and gain further divine wisdom from you. Father, we pray right now for clarity. Kingdom ordained clarity. So that we are not just stuck or hung up on this word, but we are able to move forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.